Welcome to day four of my Christmas confection countdown. So we are about to find out what we're going to be getting for treat number four. Just to recap a little bit, we have already done the chocolate cherry cordial pie, some meringue pops, and a gingerbread cheesecake. And if you haven't seen those videos yet and you're just now finding me, I will put up a little link here to the playlist for this Christmas confection countdown. And um, also, if you're new, welcome. I am Megan. And this year I decided to take on maybe the insane task of making 12 desserts in a row on video. Uh, so, welcome to my game and let's find out what we're making today. So day number four, we are down here. All right. Day number four is gonna be Christmas cookie fudge. So I'm slightly intimidated by fudge, which is why I put it in here because I knew it would be a little bit of a challenge for me. I have made fudge in the past, but it's not one of my like go-to, I wanna make this dessert um, type deal. But I do like fudge, I guess. Um, just not making it. So Christmas cookie fudge, my idea was I would make my two favorite Christmas cookies into a fudge. And now most people would think, well your favorite Christmas cookies gotta be sugar, right? No. My favorite Christmas cookies are snickerdoodle and chocolate chip. And those are the ones we are going to turn into a fudge today. So I'm gonna go get my ingredients ready and we can get started. All right, so before we head on over to our stove, I wanted to just discuss our ingredients a little bit because I am going to be making a white chocolate based fudge. So I've got my white chocolate here and some heavy cream, some whole milk, and then I've got vanilla, some salt, some butter, and some corn syrup. And then the most important part to making this taste like a cookie, like a chocolate chip cookie or a snickerdoodle cookie, is going to be some brown sugar and some plain white sugar. So I have one cup of white sugar, two cups of brown sugar. It's gonna give me that color that I want from these cookies and also that sweetness that you get from like a chocolate chip cookie or a snickerdoodle cookie. And what I plan on doing, because I don't need a massive amount of fudge hanging around my house, especially making 12 desserts in a row, I'm going to make this and then I'm gonna split it into two separate pans to make them the two different types. So they're gonna be the same base, two different ways. And to do that, I've got some mini chocolate chips for my chocolate chip cookies. And I've got a mixture of white sugar, brown sugar, and cinnamon for my snickerdoodle cookie. And we're going to get over to the stove and start cooking this up. Okay, so I have prepared two different pans and I didn't want, because I'm splitting this batter, I didn't want to have, or this fudge. <laughs> because I'm splitting the fudge, I didn't want to have a really big pan. So I went with one of my loaf pans and then I also have a six square inch. But they're both lined with parchment, which is sprayed with baking spray, just to keep it from sticking to my parchment paper. And then I have a large bowl that I'm going to use to um, aerate it once it's cooled down. So I'm gonna cook it to a certain temperature in this pot here. And then once it's at that temperature, I'm going to transfer it to this bowl, let it cool, and then I'm gonna whip as hard as I can to get the air incorporated in there. And then we will put our um, first batch into one of the pans. That's gonna be our snickerdoodle. And in the second batch, I'm gonna add my chocolate chips. So to this pan on the stove here, I'm going to add my sugar, my cream, my milk, my chocolate, my corn syrup, and my salt. And I'm gonna get that going. I also have a cooking thermometer here, it's just a little probe thermometer, and this is gonna be how I tell what temperature we are at. We're looking to get it to a softball stage, which is gonna be around 236 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so that's gonna be when we remove it from the heat and let it start to cool down to 110, and then we'll continue on from there. But I'll explain this kinda as we're going.
Okay, so we're just going to let this sit and heat up until the chocolate melts. So I'm going to get through this and then I'll bring you back when the chocolate has melted and we are ready to move on to the next stage. All right, so I've got my mixture completely melted in, the chocolate's melted, now I'm just not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna let it sit here. I've got my thermometer propped up here. Thermometer is propped up and the probe is sitting in the pan. And I'm just going to let it sit there until we reach that softball stage. Currently we're at about 120 and we need to get it to a boil and also to 236. So we're just gonna sit and wait. It's the best part about making candy is this quite a bit of sit and waiting, but then when everything starts going, it goes fast <laughs> for the sugar. All right, so we are at that temp. We are going to pull this off and we are going to pour it into our bowl very carefully. The last thing you want on you is any hot molten sugar. Trust me, been there. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna pour it directly into my bowl. Careful with that steam. Get all of that goodness in there. All right. And now I'm not going to stir. I'm just going to put my vanilla in my butter and just let it melt it. I'm going to pop my probe back in and you can see how it's kind of bubbling there. That is the alcohol in the vanilla reacting to the heat and the malted caramel that is in the bowl. And it's already starting to melt the butter, which is exactly what we want. Now we're just going to sit and wait until we get down to that temperature. Well, well, this sits and hangs out until it gets to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I am going to go and try and get the caramel out of this pan before it sticks. So as soon as this gets to 110, we'll be back to do the whipping and the aerating and then pouring into our pans and adding our toppers and our mix-ins. And it's gonna be a beautiful duo of cookie fudges. I'm very excited. This already smells delicious in here. All right, now I've let this cool down um, to its temperature that needed to get to 110 and I'm going to whip the air into it. As soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna prepare, put it in to its pans and then we are going to let it rest overnight. So this is kinda, kinda gonna be a two-part deal because it's already almost three o'clock in the morning and so, I'm going to let it sit overnight and then we'll slice it tomorrow and see how beautiful our fudge ended up. But we are going to whip the air into it right now with the wooden spoon. So I have that here. is to have no shine on it. It's starting to dull out and it's starting to thicken up. So we're coming closer. And I don't honestly know how much I can actually do <laughs> before my arms give out. But we're gonna see what we got end up with. starting to lose our shine there. Everything is looking great. I'm going to give it a couple of more good stirs and then I'm gonna call it. Longer pan here, because this is going to be just my snickerdoodle. And I'm not trying to make very thick fudge. I just want like little like two inch squares. So I got my snickerdoodle fudge here and I'm just going to take my cinnamon sugar topping, and give it a nice generous All right, and then this one is done. Our next one 
I'm gonna take a little bit of that fudge and stick it to the sides for the paper again because I don't wanna spill it in like I did the first time. I'm going to add in my chocolate chips because I wanna get that chocolate chip cookie going. I'm just gonna come in and just kinda mix it all around. And I'm going for a lot of chocolate chips. And this even looks just like a chocolate chip cookie batter. I don't know if I had light for that, but it looks just like a chocolate chip cookie batter, which is even more fun. We're going to stir it in, make sure all that chocolate, we don't want to stir it too much because it is kind of warm still. It will start to melt those chocolate chips. So I'm already starting to do that a little bit here, you see. So I'm gonna just do that and then we will take all that, pop it right in our pan. And let that ooey gooey goodness become beautiful fudge. And it melted down a little bit, but it's fine. I'll still get the flavor I like from it. It's more of like a chocolate cookie fudge, but it's fine. I'll add some chocolate chips on top. Come in, just gonna pat that down, smooth it out. And just because ours melted, I'm gonna add some more to the top just for the look. A little pat in there, fill in here. All right, there we have it. There is our chocolate chip cookie fudge and our snickerdoodle fudge. So I'm gonna let these rest overnight and then tomorrow we will pick this video up with cutting and talking about the flavors. All right, so we are done with our fudge. It got to rest overnight and it's actually the next day. Um, and I think it looks fantastic and it definitely smells great. So we're going to unmold them now because they've been sitting in these pans and I need to get them unmolded and sliced up. So what we have, just as a refresher, we have the snickerdoodle fudge and the chocolate chip cookie fudge. My chocolate chip cookie fudge kind of swirled in a little bit, but I threw chocolate chips on top and I still think it looks great. And also, I have a helper. This is gonna be my official taste tester. So we are gonna see what she thinks of this homemade fudge. All right, so which one do you wanna start with, Ingrid? Do you wanna start with the chocolate chip or the snickerdoodle? The snickerdoodle. All right, we're starting with the snickerdoodle. Okay, so we're gonna so we're going to pop this out and see what we ended up with. And remember, this is the one where my pan was a little bit bigger than the recipe that I was making when I split it in half. So I actually popped some parchment back behind here. So it's gonna be a little square. It's not gonna be the size of our whole bunt pan. Right. All right, so here is our first one. This is our snickerdoodle fudge. And it's a great size. It's soft. So we're gonna put it on our cutting board and get a little slice here for this tiny little taste tester we have. All right, I'll cut off the end here. Oh, and it's beautiful and soft inside. Like butter soft, that's wonderful. All right, let's go, here's a little taste test. What do you think? Fabulous. <laughs> it's fabulous. And it's a bit too sour and sweet. It's a little bit sour and sweet. But it's great. I'm not tasting any sour, so I don't know where she's getting sour from. But it's soft, it's creamy, and it tastes just like fudge you'd buy at a fudge shop, which is lovely. I think it could have been a little bit stiffer, but we could have just whipped it longer, kept um, stirring it to make it a little bit more uh, stiff and aerated. Once that air starts to hit it, that's when it firms up. But I think it tastes wonderful. I think it's great. So you didn't like this one? What would you give this one? Would you give this an A plus? Uh, I think a seven plus. A seven? Uh-huh, a seven plus. A seven plus, a seven is that out of a one to 10 scale? Uh-huh. Okay, all right, so now we have our chocolate chip fudge here. Yeah, we do have chocolate chip fudge. So, are you ready to taste test my mom's 
I am ready to taste test. Are you ready to taste test? Uh, yes. All right, so we have our chocolate. chocolate chip fudge here and it is also the perfect thickness for what I was looking for for fudge. This one is gonna be a little bit richer because of all the chocolate in there. It's time. And it's definitely cutting a little bit thicker. I'm just slicing it. I'm going for cubes instead of the bar or like the little circles you could buy when you go to candy shops. Because, I mean, you don't really need to eat that big of a piece of fudge. You always end up storing it. So I'm just doing them in little slices. Are you ready to taste test one? Uh -huh. Let's split it. Watch your finger. I'm going to cut here. Ready? Go ahead. Go on. Yeah? Go ahead, try it. I want to try one. You want to try one? Uh -huh. Okay. You want more chocolate chips? All right, now I have a second taste tester. So we're going to see what she thinks. You want to try a little bit? Mm. Yeah? Go ahead. Try a little bit. I want to <laughs> Did you like the fudge? Yes. You like the fudge? All right, so that's gonna be the end of day four. And I think the fudge came out great. I would like to try this recipe with a whole bunch of other flavors. Um, so I will definitely be looking to do that pretty soon because I was super intimidated by fudge, but this has been fantastic. So if you're following along with this series and you want to tag me on Instagram, my Instagram is the Busy Bug Homestead. So you can go ahead and go follow me over there. And if you wanna make some of the desserts I've been making, go ahead and... Uh, post them with the hashtag Christmas Confections Countdown. We will be going for 12 straight days. Today is day four, and I'm excited to see what we end up with tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.